Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. This is Maria Liberati. What does food mean to you? Tell me in a recorded soundbite of 60 seconds or less, or a post, a social media post of 50 words or less, post on social media, hashtag at the Maria Liberati Show, or email it directly to us at info at marialiberati.com and if your soundbite or quotes are selected to be part of an upcoming segment i'll send an autographed copy of my book from the basic art of italian cooking award-winning book series to you as special thanks i love having my listeners be part of the show so come on and join in And I also have some pretty exciting news. I have not been able to do events for a while because of everything going on, the pandemic and everything being limited, limited events and limited travel. And I've been so disappointed. Holidays are usually a time when I get to to see everybody and uh, share food and do lots of events with everyone. But my team and I have been working to get a series of virtual events ready. And the first one will be on December 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be showing participants how to bake my panettone in time for the holidays. You know, nothing says holidays like panettone. The event is called From Italy with Love. And the first 10 ticket buyers will receive a free bag of flour from Molino Denti, an amazing Italian flour company who will be sponsoring the event. I really hope to see many of you at this event. I missed you all so much this year, so I'm really excited for this. The link to buy tickets is on ticketly.com. You can just look up the events produced by Art of Living Prima Media Inc. Or you can go to my website, marialiberati.com, and you'll find a link. You can go to my blog at marialiberati.com, and you'll find a link in the blog post. You can also go to to my Twitter account at Maria Liberati with a capital M. My Facebook account is Chef Maria Liberati and Instagram is Maria Liberati. Hope to see you at that event. So this week on my blog, I shared tips with everyone on how to create holiday ambiance in your home. Holidays are such a fun time and this time of the year, well, more people are home than usual. So if you're home, create more of a holiday ambiance. Probably this year you might have more time to do that. And it's never been more important to create a wonderful holiday-friendly ambiance at home. So the holidays are a beautiful time of year, complete with family and fun. You'll be spending a lot of time in your home with the people that you love, so you'll want some ambiance. The best way to create holiday ambiance in your home is to include enticing holiday smells, cozy warmth, and colors and decorations. Holiday smells automatically bring back previous holiday memories. There are many traditional holiday scents that can be incorporated into the home. Pine, cranberry, cinnamon, peppermint, and many other scents are popular around the holidays. You can light candles, bake cookies or other goods, or or simmer oranges and cinnamon on the stove to create these scents. And that's really a simple, easy way to create holiday holiday ambiance just by simmering these things on the stove. Putting an enticing holiday smell in your home will help you create the perfect holiday ambiance. You can bring holiday ambiance through creating cozy warmth in your home. You can do this by lighting your fireplace, lighting candles, turning on lamps, and throwing blankets over the sides of armchairs and couches. Putting blankets where they'll be readily available will help your home feel cozy and your guests will feel welcome. Since electric fireplaces don't need chimneys or venting, they can be an ideal solution for those who want a fireplace but don't have a chimney to vent their smoke. Adding cozy warmth will help you perfect your home for the holidays. Colors and decor are the best way for you to create holiday ambiance in your home. There are specific colors that are associated with the holidays. You can bring in colors that reflect the season like red, plum, green, and 
cream. You can even use gold and silver to add a festive sparkle. Decorations are another way to bring in the holiday ambiance. They're an easy way. You can string garland, fill bowls with ornaments, set up snowflake ornaments over the dining room table, hang wreaths on doors, and make good use of holly branches and winter berries. These are things that will help you fill home with the necessary ambiance. There are many things associated with the holidays like Christmas, snow, and family. You'll be spending a lot of time with your loved ones in your home, so you'll need some ambiance. The best way to create holiday ambiance in your home is to include enticing holiday smells, cozy warmth, and colors and decorations. Okay, so last week, if you go to my last week's episode, you'll see a recipe for holiday panettone bread. It's the perfect way to say Christmas in Italian is presenting a panettone bread as a gift to someone. And I did mention that I am doing a panettone event, a virtual event, but I also wanted to share another holiday recipe with you since we're talking about holidays and nothing says holidays better than special food and this is a recipe that i love because i love avocados they're so good for you they're really healthy for you and i love using food that's functional food that's also healthy for you and has a function also delicious so this recipe is an italian style guacamole i call it avocado italiano and it's an easy appetizer again i don't want to stress you out during the holidays i don't like to get stressed out during the holidays i like to do things that are fun and delicious and not so difficult to stress me out but things that are fun to do also this is my recipe for avocado italiano. It's a great appetizer recipe that you can use for your holiday appetizer. It is two ripe avocados, the juice of one lemon, four tablespoons of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, a tablespoon of chopped fresh basil, three tablespoons of chopped sun-dried tomatoes packed in olive oil and drained. Mash the avocado, add in all the other ingredients. If you're taking the spread with you to someone else's house, place the spread in plastic containers and then place plastic wrap against the surface of the avocado spread before you close the container. This makes a perfect dip for cut vegetables, of course, tortilla chips. You can uh, cut up pita bread into little squares. You can use it for crackers. You can even spread it on Italian bread if you want to cut the bread in slices and then put the bread under the broiler, drizzle with some uh, just a little bit of olive oil, and then put this avocado spread on it. It's delicious and it's healthy as well. I have on this special Christmas holiday podcast, my special guest is Laura Donadoni, the Italian wine girl, and uh, we've had her here before. She's a popular guest since, you know, since this podcast is all about the holidays and Christmas and decorating for the holidays and creating an ambiance in your home. Well, food is important for that, but wine is also important and what can be more festive than sparkling bubbly wine. So I wanted Lauda to give us some suggestions for our Christmas table in spark of sparkling wines that are festive. Lauda, ciao. Thanks for being here. Ciao. Thank you for having me and a happy holiday. Yes. Happy holidays is right. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Yes. So can you give us some suggestions for our uh, Christmas dinner and holiday table? Yeah, definitely. So everybody likes to drink, like to drink uh, bubbles and sparkling wine for the holidays because they are festive the champagne is basically a celebration wine right so but uh, champagne can be more expensive and sometimes you can you can have wines with a even better quality for a fraction of the price so i would like to give you some suggestion to uh, you know try something different than champagne for your holidays this year uh, first choice could be cremant 
Cremant it is the French word uh, to indicate all the sparkling wines produced in France outside from the Champagne region. So you can find Cremant coming from Alsace, Cremant coming for Le, Le Loire, La Val de la Loire, uh, Cremant coming for, from Burgundy. So if you look at, for, out for Cremant, it's going to be the same production method of Champagne and sometimes even better grapes varieties uh, for a fraction of the price because because a good cremant, you it can cost around $20, uh, something like that. And you can really find really, really good wine in that section. So look out for cremant if you like France. Then uh, there is, uh, of course, a version uh, of Italian champagne, like a metodo classical, we call it like this. Uh, it's a wine produced with the same method of champagne, but in Italy. And I have two suggestions in this uh, for, for Italy. One is Trento Doc. Trento is a city in the northern eastern part of Italy, like close to the Dolomites, the Alps. And there, there is a whole district focused on uh, sparkling wines. And if you look out for, for instance, Ferrari is one of the biggest winery there, or other wines uh, with the Trento Doc appellation, you're gonna have uh, champagne-like wines coming from the mountains of Italy. And then another region to look out for is Francia Corta. Francia Corta is in Lombardy, like 30 miles east from Milan. And there they produce, again, champagne-like wines mm -hmm. and is a DOCG appellation. So it's the higher uh, ranking quality appellation for Italian sparkling wines. And of course, if you like simpler, fresher, like aperitivo wines, Prosecco is the must to go from Italy. And I think it is so popular in the US because everybody likes Prosecco. I mean, it's so easy drinking and refreshing. And yeah, so that's another option too. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And I'm glad you mentioned Francia Corte is one of my favorites. I love that. So yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that also. But yes, Prosecco is a standby. Yes, everybody Can you does. Tell us that. about some interesting trends that you're seeing that, that, or we should look for in 20. 21. Yes, I selected four trends for you and your listeners yeah. uh, for 2021 in, uh, in, the, in the wine field. Uh, first of all, look out for diversity. Um, for example, uh, we are used to drink the mainstream wines like the very famous, I don't know, Barolo or Barbaresco from Italy. Piedmont is one of the Italy's most famous wine region. If you like that region, you should look for less known grape varieties is grown there. Probably you will like the style because the producers are the same. But if you look out for, you know, uh, I don't know, Arnais or Cortese or Timorasso, I'm just naming a few uh, white varieties from Piemonte, you will probably discover a wine that you may like because you like the area, but is not uh, the same you're drinking um, several times. So you don't get bored and you uh, embrace, you know, diversity also so in the grape varieties. And this is a trend because millennials like to explore. And this year we weren't able to travel. So choosing different grape varieties is a good way to travel with wine. So in 2021, this will be a trend for sure. And another trend I see in 2021 is uh, Eastern European countries like Georgia, Moldova, Croatia, Hungary, or Greece. Uh, you have to know that the viticulture was born there. So the, the uh, several thousand of years ago, the very first uh, testimonies we have uh, of viticulture is in Georgia. The very first wines were made out of amphores, like a clay amphores. Oh. And so now there is a whole trend about orange wines made in amphores coming from the eastern part of Europe. And this um, is something that you will see more and more on the shelves in the next uh, years in 2021 as well. And then again, another trend is lighter wines. I'm talking um, about red wines mainly. Mm -hmm. So we see that people, uh, young people, are uh, preferring a uh, light version of uh, red wines, such as Gamay or Cinso or Pinotage or Pinot Noir, instead of the high alcoholic and bold and very luscious uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or you know Merlot, for instance. So the trend is toward uh, fresher and also less caloric wines because we see that now young generation are looking out for 
for what they call a, a fit wine, which is a term I don't like, but uh, they look out for wine with less uh, alcohol content in order to be uh, less caloric and less, uh, you know, potentially fattening. Let, yeah. Let's say this. Yeah. This is something I don't like, but it's a trend anyway. I guess they're trying to get healthy, you know, stay kind of with the healthier wines. Good for you, but you know, the healthier, less calories and all of that. I guess they're looking for that. Yeah, and also the TTB now al allows producer to put the amount, the nutritional fact and the amount of calories on the labels. Oh. So you will see more and more of this in 2021, like producers stating a glass of this wine is 92 calories. So uh, this is something new because it's uh, since July 2020 that the TTB allowed the producer to, to market the calories of their wine. Wow. And wow. the last trend for next year is going to be uh, a trend that is going on since uh, at least another a couple of years it, that is minimal intervention wines what does it mean it means uh, the people will prefer wine uh, made in a simple way with uh, less preservatives no added sulfites uh, organic or sustainable viticulture so mm -hmm. there is a more uh, more sensibility toward the env environment and the sustainability of winemaking wow that's very very interesting i'm hoping they do because i am so sensitive to sulfite. So I have to be really careful when I drink a bottle of wine that, um, you know, is from another country that we, or even from here, if they use sulfites. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, wow. Well, that's really interesting. So there you have it. The four, those are the four trends, right? Yeah. That we should be looking for. And they're very, very interesting. One thing I do want to ask you, do you know, I, it sounds to me like people have gotten more into the in interested interest in wine especially during the pandemic right it sounds like yeah. more people yeah because having more time uh, right. at home and maybe enjoying more wines because if you look at the sales uh, yeah. during the pandemic they went up the sales of wines and liquors and distillates i don't know if it's a good um, yeah. news or not but yeah. anyway we had more time we were cooking more at home yes, so maybe yes. the interest uh, around wines was also because it of these be. reasons and also because we couldn't travel so yeah. So learning true. about wines, as I mentioned at the beginning, is a way to travel the world, to know new countries, new regions, new tradition, new food. Yeah. So it was a different way to explore. Exactly. It's a different way to travel. And I love that you said that. I think that's a great idea. You can travel through, through wines. Lauda, thank you so much and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you again, but thank you for stopping by. That's Lauda Donna Donna. Lauda, just tell us um, where we can find you again on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at the Italian Wine Girl is my handle on all the accounts, Instagram, Facebook, and also my blog is uh, uh, theitalianwinegirl.com where I have more, you know, suggestions for wines, festivity, or Italian wines if you are curious about it. So thank you for having me. Thank Marie. you, Laura. Ciao. Until Ciao. next time. See you. Thanks for joining us and listening to the Maria Liberati Show, where we explore the question, what does food mean to you? This is Maria Liberati, and I'd like to also thank my producer, Britton Roselle, my production interns, Max Tedford and Alexandra Krenz, and also want to remind you to watch my Friday favorites, that's my hashtag Friday favorites, on Facebook Live at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This week we have Lauda Donna Donny, who incidentally uh, I need to thank because she was my special guest for this week's show. She's known as the Italian Wine Girl. And if you watch my hashtag Friday favorites, she's going to tell us about some really interesting wine trends for 2021. And also, please join us for a holiday panettone bake along. You know, my team worked really hard to put this event together so I can do a holiday event since we're not able to do any in person events. But this is a virtual one. So I'll be able to visit with people all over the world. So please join. And you can get tickets on ticketleap.com. And again, it's a holiday panettone bake along. The title of the event is From Italy with Love because in Italy, nothing says Christmas or holidays more so than panettone. And it's such a delicious bread and fun. 
to bake and bake along with me. So again, the important thing to remember is registration is limited, but the first 10 registrants will get a bag of flour from the Molino Denti Company. It's a bag of flour from Italy, from the Molino Denti Company. So please join as soon as possible. Again, registration is limited, but the first 10 will get a bag of flour from the Molino Denti Company. And you can also find links to the event. It's called From Italy with Love. You can find the place to purchase tickets at ticketleap.com. You can find the link on my podcast about Panettone. You can find it there. You can also find the link on my blog at marialiberati.com on my Twitter account at Maria Liberati with a capital M. You can also find it on my Facebook account at Chef Maria Liberati, on my Instagram account at Maria Liberati. Hope to see you there. And don't forget, if you tell us in a 60 second audio or a 50 words or less social media post of what food means to you and post those either one of those, hashtag it the Maria Liberati show. And if it's selected to be part of an upcoming segment, I will send you an autographed copy of one of my books from the award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking to you as a thank you. And lastly, I just want to mention uh, for the holidays, my book, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, second edition is the Gourmand World winner. It was, it won the award as the best Italian cookbook in the USA for 2010. And it's kind of become a holiday tradition edition all around the world and you can get a copy of it at amazon.com at marialiberati.com almost any place that books are sold online that's all for now peace love and pasta until next time